slippery. And I have a five times four bring us back to another program. These girls will go to church and agree to the part for free. Please help us to be obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. In the parking lot of the coffee shop just the other day. She smiled and she said, well, I'm doing okay, but I felt her pain. Took her hands in mine, said it's gonna work out fine. But as she turned, I wondered, did I just hand her a line? What she needed most was a word of old prayer too. I tell her more time and a timely word could have pulled her through. So I think of her and I wonder too. Is anybody hurting sitting right next to you? Shine a light, share a faith. Show the world that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way. Together we can make a difference Be a beacon in the dark of night Share your faith, hold the light Shine your light Davio, watch it a lot in the beauty of holiness And tell us get to Thanksgiving Love the Lord with all your heart See don't let us worship on bow down. Oh, that is worship. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And make a joyful noise unto the Lord. E, enter his courts with praise. Have you? E, L, C, O, M, E. Welcome. My name is Church. My name is Liana Glasgow, and I will be doing your our family lesson. And our lesson is entitled for all people. And our message says, "I worship God with my worldwide church family." And our memory verse is taken from Revelation 15:4. All nations will come and worship before you. Have you ever had a special guest come to your church? Was that person a well-known preacher or a singer? The Israelites invited an extra special guest to their new church, God. He even promised to live in their temple. Solomon's eyes sparkled. It was finished. All the furniture was in the right place. Every, every detail was complete. It was time now to dedicate te the temple to the Lord. Solomon called the leaders of all the tribes and families of Israel to come to Jerusalem. The first part of the de dedication involved bringing the ark to its new home in the temple. Everyone watched as the priest took the ark from Obedidom's home, where it had been stored for three months. They carried it solely with great respect and joy to the temple. King Solomon and the people sacrificed sheep and oxen along the way. In their joy, they sacrificed so many sheep and oxen to the Lord that no one could keep count. The priests carried the ark containing the law of God into the most holy place of the temple. They set it careful, carefully between the wings of the two great carved gold, gold covered angels. Then all the Levites who were musicians stood near the altar playing their instruments, cymbals and arps and lyrics. The musicians sang and played loudly and powerfully together. They praised and thanked the Lord. He is so good, they sang. His faithful love endures forever. And at that moment, the most amazing thing happened. A great crowd filled the temple 
The cloud held the glorious presence of the Lord. The priests could not continue their work. They had to leave the temple because of God's glory. Solomon saw the cloud and his heart swelled with thankfulness. The temple was finished and the Lord had moved in. He turned around and looked at, at all the Israelites standing before him. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he shouted. Then Solomon knelt down. He lifted his hands towards heaven in front of the, in front of all the people. He began to pray, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven or earth. You keep your promise and show unfailing love to all who obey you. May you watch over this temple both day and night. May you always hear the prayers I make toward is toward this place. If your people are ever defeated by their enemies because they have sinned against you, and if they turn to you and call on your name and pray to you in here, in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive their sins. Forgive your people who have sinned against you, against you, for they are your people, your special position, whom you brought out of Egypt. When Solomon finished praying, he stood up and shouted a blessing over all the people of Israel. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he give us the desire to obey his commands. May people all over the earth know that the Lord is God. Then the king and all the children of Israel offered sacrifice to the Lord. Solomon and the Israelites celebrated together for 14 days. No one could ever forget it. They could tell it again and again. Finally, someone could write down the story so people could read it forever. Unity, unity, unity. What really is unity and why is it so important to the body of Christ? Well, those are excellent questions. Unity is being in harmony and in accord. I agree and I also know that unity is important to the body of Christ. But why is unity important to the body of Christ? Unity is very important. You see, it's a command of God. In Ephesians 4, 3-6, the, the Bible says, For there is one body and one spirit, even as we are called in all in hope at our calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and is us all. We are one in Christ. Different ethnic groups, the Amerindians, us Europeans, the Africans, the East Indians, the Chinese, and Portuguese. All, each one of us has a different part to play in the re, in the ethnic society of Guyana. Just like, right? Just like that. The body of, the body of Christ is just like that. Right? All right. Well, just like we have six six groups but one guy in us. First Corinthians twelve twelve says For as the body is one and at many members and all the members of that one body We are one in Christ. Good morning Sabbath School Our story is entitled An Ita Sabbath Adventure. Happy Sabbath, Father's voice cut through the darkness, and it is stirred in our bed. 
Rise and shine, sunshine, father said, poking his head into the door of Anita's bedroom. It was four o'clock in the morning. Anita's eyes popped open. It was time to get up. After breakfast, Anita put on her favorite Sabbath dress. Then she slipped her bare feet into foot props. She gave her Sabbath shoes to mother to put in a bag. Now she was ready for the trip to church. Anita, Anita climbed into the back seat of the family's white van. Father slid behind the steering wheel and Pastor Camus took the seat beside him. Mother sat with Anita in the back. They were joined by five university students. At 5 a.m., the white van left the campus of Mount Calabat University. The Seventh-day Adventist School in, in Dionysia, where father and mother taught as American missionaries. Anita slept on her mother's lap. After an hour and a half later, Anita woke as the white van came to a stop. She liked this part of trip to church. She and the others boarded a small motorboat and soon they were sailing on the ocean. A warm, humid air brushed against her cheeks as the boat navigated against the gentle waves. After an hour, the boat docked on an island. The group transferred to another boat for a 30 minute ride. They landed on another island dotted with coconut trees and a large green jungle. Anita was glad that she hadn't worn flip flops and not her nice Sabbath shoes. She had to walk along a very muddy trail. About four to five minutes later, Anita saw a small village with a small Seventh day Adventist church. Sabbath school would begin soon, and the church was crowded already with people. The people greeted Anita and others with delight. They were so happy to welcome the visitors. They knew that it would have taken an effort to reach their village. Little children waved excitedly as Anita crossed stared around her. A little girl ran up and pinched the white skin on Anita's arm. A little boy reached out a daring arm and tugged on her hair. The village children had brown skin and black hair, and this was their first time seeing someone with white skin and red hair. Anita smiled back. She didn't let the children touch her, but she didn't do anything. She understood that they were curious. Inside the church, mother pulled Anita's Sabbath, school, Sabbath shoes from the bag, and Anita slipped them on. Now she was ready to worship God. Late in the afternoon, Anita put back on her flip-flops for a long trip back home. She was tired but happy. Every Sabbath, father and mother went to a new church to share Jesus. Every Sabbath, their trip was a new adventure. Best of all, every Sabbath, they got, got to worship God. Anita liked being a missionary kid. Her sketch reading is taken on John 13, 35. But, but they shall all men know that they are my disciples if they have love one to another. I have a dream, a dream of what I want to be, I want to be free. That's what my heart keeps telling me, give me a hand, we'll find a way to speak for our bed, we'll feel the sun, we can have it. We 
transitions from an identical pathfinder. He prides himself in serving God with all his heart. He is in grade 5 at the Marian Academy School and has one sibling. I present to you budding pastor Nicole Williams. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. The text of my sermon today is taken from Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. A small band of believers huddles in an upper room. They are waiting. The numbers are small, but the challenge they face is great. They are to be Jesus' witnesses, not just in Jerusalem, but in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. But how could they be witnesses in this world without Jesus? Jesus has been taken up into heaven, leaving the disciples a puzzling message. They will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. What's that supposed to mean? What's more, these disciples can still hear the echoes of Jesus praying, not for their escape from the world, but for their protection in it. Concluding his prayer, Jesus Jesus prayed not only for his band of believers, but for us, those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. 2022 is a time of turmoil. The COVID pandemic is still with us. Wars and rumors of wars are swirling. Issues like same-sex marriage, abortion, gun crimes, showed the fractured lines of division in our society. Likewise, there is division within families and within the church. Worship styles sometimes divide generations. This unity, rather than unity, marks our lives and mars our witness in the world. If we can't get along with each other, why would the world want to hear the gospel? My message is titled, Blessings of Unity. Ladies and gentlemen, God calls his people to live in unity with one another. So it is important to make every effort to live together in harmony with everyone. Regardless of beliefs and differences, God commands us to do all in love. Christian friends, life is messy. Relationships are messy. Times of stress can strain relationships and we end up hurting each other and destroying the unity we have worked hard for. We must understand that Satan's goal is to destroy our unity, but God has given us the ability to be patient, kind, and loving through actions and words. Scripture reminds us that it is our responsibility as Christians to lead the way for unity among all nations and people. Christian friends, there are several blessings for having unity in our church. First of all, a united church attracts God's favor. The Bible tells us that unity is like the anointed oil that runs down the beard of Aaron. The oil symbolic, the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. I believe there is unity. The presence and power of the Holy Spirit will be there and operating. God also commands his blessings where there is unity. Think about this. The Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost when the believers were in one mind and in 
one accord. I submit to the church today that if we want God to empower us, there has to be unity in the church. God can't bless favor and division. God can't be attracted to this unity when he is a God of unity. There is unity in the Godhead and he expects there to be unity among his people. Secondly, when there is unity, God will open doors and opportunity for his church. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says, Two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. Christian friends, more can be accomplished when we work together than working separately. When Jesus sent all his disciples, he sent them out two by two. Why? I believe it's because there is strength in numbers. Two is better than one. Three is better than two. Thirdly, unity leads to sustainability. The Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand. It cannot last. The same is true for a church. If a church is divided, it will not accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. It will not be everything that God wants it to be. A church is that is divided will eventually implode from within. It will destroy itself. Then, if we are to last and, and to be sustainable, there must be unity. And if you're thinking, Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it, that's correct. He said that. But it's his church that is building, not our church. His church will have unity, not division. His church will have order, not chaos and confusion. Christian friends, having unity is all about loving one another. The world will know that we belong to Jesus Christ. And when we love one another, true love for one another will lead to real unity. And it takes the Holy Spirit to produce real love. Love is a work of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Love should flow from our lives naturally as believers. And if we find that we aren't loving, then maybe we need to examine our lives to see if we have really been saved. We may not always love perfectly, but if we're more hateful than loving, there, there's a problem in our heart. As I close, being the body of Christ does not just happen. It takes work and we must exercise constant vigilance at the same time. The coming of the Holy Spirit reminds us that the foundation of the church is the ongoing work of our triune God. When we are empty of pride, self-righteousness and envy, we may be filled by the Spirit. Do you want to be filled by the Holy Spirit? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing me with this sermon so I can proclaim it to your people. Thank you for preaching through me to your people. Lord, please help your people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, I hope they are so inspired to tell others so the others can be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you. A dream, a dream of what I want to be, I want to be free, that's what my heart keeps telling me, give me a hand, we'll find a way, this people out there, who will feel the same, we can help each other, I just know we can succeed. We are one, but we are different. We are all around the world. We share the same sun, we share the same ocean. We are every boy and girl. We come together and share our dreams to be among the stars. And we know that it's destiny that we
If you can find a calm a place to be afraid. We are one, but we are different. We from all around the world. We share the same sun. We share the same ocean. Oh.